MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's uh, do this thing. First things first, uh, if you're tuning in right now, I want to wish everybody a happy holidays. A Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever it is uh, that you celebrate or you don't uh, celebrate. Either way, we've got your back, man. There's no rest up for the wicked. Of course, uh, we've got a monster UFC 207 around uh, the corner. Uh, very interesting, actually, if you guys didn't realize. That card is actually on Friday night. Uh, not Saturday night. Saturday night's uh, New Year's Eve, and even the UFC doesn't want to go head-to-head uh, with New Year's Eve. College football uh, goes head-to-head with New Year's Eve. They have their college football playoffs, and last year they were warned about this. I don't know if that's such a good idea, guys. And uh, they were so arrogant, they basically stated uh, their exact statement was, we could, we could play on the 4th of July, and it doesn't matter. People will watch. Oh, yeah, they had their lowest ratings for, like, uh, you know, they had their lowest ratings in, like, you know, in the last 20 years uh, last year. They moved the games up a little bit. But long story short, it doesn't matter how big you are in the sports world. You know, the power of New Year's Eve uh, is a big one, especially if you're uh, holding a card in Vegas. So the card's on Friday night, uh, guys. So we're going to take a look ahead a little bit uh, at Ronda Rousey. I want to break down what happened uh, this past weekend uh, with the uh, the poster uh, children of the UFC both being humbled on national television. Let's bring in Susan Singari, uh, an Emmy Award winning Susan Singari. I like saying that we don't have a lot of uh, Emmy Award winners on our show, uh, Susan. SusanSingari.com, always a pleasure. Susan, how you doing? I'm great, Gabe, and welcome to the fans. You know, and so, um, yeah, first off, uh, happy holidays. It's uh, the end of another year. As we get older, Susan, time really goes by quick, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. There's not enough hours or moments in the week to cover all the MMA that's coming up next year, and this year's been uh, one fight after another, but we love it here. It actually depresses me at times because, you know, I, I'm reading about fighters, and, uh, you know, I follow you on Twitter, and you're a great follow. We encourage people to follow you, and you're always tweeting, you know, this day in MMA history. And I'm like, dear God, like, that was that long ago, huh? And, like... <laughs> You know, here we are at UFC 207, and I was thinking about what Cain Velasquez is actually fighting. You know, Cain was dominant in the UFC 105 days. <laughs> like, you know, we're 100, we're 100, you know, 100 pay-per-views uh, later. It's amazing that uh, some of these dudes are still hanging on. But nevertheless, um, you know, Paige Van Zandt and uh, Sage Northcutt, I didn't think they should have been uh, the main and, and co-main events. Uh, last week. I thought they should have thrown a bone to Uriah Faber. There was no championship uh, fight on the card. And, um, you know, Uriah ends up uh, winning, going out in heroic fashion. Uh, but both Page and both Sage lose. I don't think Dan is losing sleep over it, but he would have preferred if they both won. <laughs> I agree with you. I kind of felt, and uh, no offense to the UFC brass, it was great that they put uh, Uriah's last fight in Sacramento, but at least he was, what, third down from the main, third fight up to the main card, whatever. I thought he should have been further up. I I think it, you know, but of course, if you listen to his post-fight speech, what a gracious and classy ambassador he is. Um, and I, I'm sad to see him lose. I mean, excuse me, sad to see him leave the sport, but uh, I was glad that he at least got a chance to fight at his own, um, in his own hometown. But I would have liked to see him, have seen him as the main event. Yeah, it would have been cool with the main event. Everybody was there to see him. And, you know, as you stated, you know, one of the greatest ambassadors to the sport ever, without a doubt. I've met uh, nearly everybody in this sport over the years, and he really is one of the nicer guys uh, that I've met. Like, he's, he's just genuinely a cool dude. So I wish him the best. And at least he, he's not getting dragged away, right? He's made enough money over the years. Um, he's not getting dragged away out of the sport, getting beat up. Um, so it was nice to see him uh, go out uh, in the fashion uh, that he did. Um, but, you know, as far as, um, as far as Paige Van Zant is concerned, the thing that impressed me the most about that fight, actually, was her opponent, and Michelle Waterson. I knew that she was a former Invicta champion, but let's be real. You know, a lot of uh, casual UFC fans, they, you know, they haven't watched Invicta. They didn't know anything about Michelle Waterson. I thought that maybe the ring rust would get to her just because she hasn't been active over the last couple of years. But she looked to be pretty refreshed, actually. And, you know, Waterson looks like she's going to be a force. The woman's depth has really, uh, really improved, uh, hasn't it, Susan, over the last couple of years? Yeah, yeah, I think she's done a really good job. It was interesting because in the post-fight analysis, 
Dominic Cruz talked to her, and they were speaking about ring rust and how perhaps the misinterpretation of ring rust by the fans and also the fact that hearing that you could have ring rust can also sort of play with the fighter's head. And so much about it is is a mental focus getting into the game. So she did have to overcome that. And I thought she did an amazing job. Um, I know her. I've watched her for a while. But one thing maybe the fans might want to go back and look at is I thought she had a damn good game face on right before the start of that fight. I was thinking to myself, hmm, could she be third runner-up or second runner-up after Ronda's? Because she looked damn good with her game face. And I mean, she, it was just kind of like after, nasty and mean. Yeah, and she, she said after the fact uh, as well that, you know, I played a lot of games with Paige the whole time, actually. Right. And, right. you know, that's, that's the experience uh, there. And it's almost... You know, I almost, you know, feel bad for Paige. You know, she's like, you know, I got to be honest with you. I picked Paige to win the fight. It was a pick. Um, I knew I was toast. As you stated, Watterson comes in. She looks like a warrior. She's ready to go. But Paige comes in and she's giggling. And I'm thinking, giggling's not good. Like, that's not right. good, Paige. I get it. You're, you're a happy-go-lucky girl. But, like, you're about to get punched in the face here. You better stop giggling. And even during the stare down... She, you know, Paige almost had that awkward, nervous giggle uh, going. Paige Van Zandt is good. She's tough as hell. I have a lot of respect for her. I don't view her just as a little Barbie doll that got a free pass to where she's been. But, you know, she's a little bit in over her head right now, it appears, uh, Susan. Yeah, I'd like to see her. Well, she mentioned that she's probably going to take some time off. Uh, and kind of regroup, practice her jujitsu. She'll be back better. Than why? Ever. Why would she want to do this? I got to be honest. Like, why would Paige Van Zandt want to be in the UFC? I'm sure, like the UFC, or whatever. Like, you know, it shows what a competitor she is. But you know, in a day and age, you know, in which celebrity is everything right now, she's already a celebrity. It's a you know, I give her. That's what I tip my cap to her for, actually. Right, uh, Susan. That. We're talking about a 22-year-old girl that can pretty much make a lot of money doing a lot of different things, yet here she is getting beat up in the octagon every six months. <laughs> she's got to love it, then. So we know yeah. that for sure. <laughs> yeah, she's she's got to love it. You know, Sage Sage is another. You know, Sage is different. Sage says, you know what? I'm going to go to a, you know a, I'm going to go back to uh, to lightweight, which I think makes sense. I think Sage has a future as well. It's just, you know, he had such the image that he got fast-tracked uh, as far as the public the public media hype was concerned. But how about this Mickey Gall kid? He's talked his way up uh, the ladder, and here he is right now. Now he calls out Dan Hardy. You're like, really? <laughs> like, seriously, dude? You know, why do you call out Sean Shirk next? I you know. I, 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 Sean Shirk, if you're watching this right now, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> I like Mickey. You know, I think he's kind of reminds me of an early Diaz boy. He's a little um, he is, yeah. rough around the ed edges. He's cocky, but he's cool. Not a Diaz, uh, you know, but you're right. You know what he is to me? He's just uh, like the, he's just that jarhead fighter. Yeah. <laughs> I hate yeah, to put yeah. it that way. He's yeah. the guy, and I told someone last week, he's the type of guy that, you know, I like to interview him. You know he's gotten into bar fights. He's that guy. You know, right. you're looking yeah, at yeah. me. You know, you stepped on my new shoes. Like he's, you can tell he's just, he's like a Jersey Shore jarhead type kid. Yeah. Jock, like, yeah. hey, but that's, you need some of these kids in a company. <laughs> I think, I think he's a good fighter. I, I was uh, kind of surprised when I read all the reports about the trash talking going on. I thought that was interesting because that wouldn't have, that didn't sound like, you know, you couldn't really hear that. that you, you didn't sound like that was going to be happening between a North Cut and a Gaul, but I think he'll do, I think he'll do really well moving forward. As far as Dan Hardy goes, I, I wasn't sure. Last time I checked, I think Hardy had a heart condition. I don't know if he's going to be able to step back in the ring, but hey, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe that would be a good matchup. I'd like to see him fight somebody that's a little more current than Dan. Unless Dan is planning, you know, coming back into the octagon, then that would be an amazing fight as well. No, he's not. He's not. He, Dan, uh, Dan's done. Dan does a good job on TV. And, um, yeah, it, it, it was a strange call-out, actually, because, you know, Mickey said, I have, an, I have a, a call-out planned. I was looking forward to it, actually, uh, because I was like, yeah, this kid's always interesting. Who's here? I'm like, Dan Hardy? Like, Dan, Dan, Dan Hardy? <laughs> Like, seriously, like, that's like the other jackass. Who was it? Was it Nick Lentz always calling out BJ Penn? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, BJ yeah. Penn's, like, smoking weed in Hawaii, dude. 
Like, you stop calling him out. You know, he's online running his website. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are, what are you calling out these legends for that are retired? Like, I don't get it. All right, so before we get you out of here, quick take on Ronda. Seems to me like Ronda, what I don't, I'll admit, I don't like about Ronda is she's like, she's only happy if she wins. You know what I mean? So, like, if she wins, she's going to be all smiles, going to be interviews everywhere, and life is great. And if she loses, she's going to put her head down, and she's not going to talk to anyone, we're never going to see her again. You know, but uh, I will say this. She's done a pretty good job, and it's pre- it has to be a concerted effort on their camp. She's been out of the spotlight, man. Like, she's, she's really, really laying low, considering how big of a fight this is. Even for promotional purposes, Susie, you really don't see her anywhere that much like you used to. Yeah, I read uh, on Twitter that she's probably not going to be doing any media interviews, although that's subject to change. I mean, I think every fighter has to deal with the pressure of moving into a fight differently. Um, you know, through the years, many fighters I've spoken with can deal with the media interviews and the hype. And even after your eyes fight, uh, Brian Stan asked him, you know, was there any pressure on you being that is your it, the hype about it being your farewell fight? So, you know, maybe it's the way she's got to deal with it because she's got a lot of, she just wants to completely focus on it. And so, and she was probably maybe burnt out. I think if, if it goes to the later rounds, I think Nunez has a chance. But if it looks like it always does in the first round and Ronda whips out that arm bar, I think, uh, I think we'll be saying goodbye to uh, Amanda much more quickly. But it should be a really good fight. I'm excited for that fight. I think Ronda thinks she could win because Ronda wouldn't come back and take a fight unless she did. She was sort of waiting for the spot, right? Like She didn't want to come back and fight Holly Holm right away again. I guarantee you that. Right. She was looking right. for that sort of in – Ooh, it's Nunez. I think I can beat her. I, I don't want to underestimate uh, Ronda, but it's really intriguing. All right, so before last uh, last thing before we get you out of here, uh, Nico Price makes his UFC debut. Uh, here's a uh, here's a guy out of Florida knocking people out in like one round. He's eight and zero. I think seven of his fights actually have lasted like fifty seconds type of deal, but. The level of competition, you know, he's fought a lot of six and three fighters, five and five type of fighters. He gets Brandon Thatch. It's a step up in class. But I'll tell you, the odds makers are obviously giving Price some respect uh, here because Thatch is only like a minus 225 favorite, uh, which is pretty low considering we got a guy that no one really knows much about in Price coming in here who hasn't beaten any name fighters before. But uh, you're down there in Florida, so you know a little bit about Price. What can you tell us? Yeah, you know, I've seen Nico fight before at Fight Time Promotions, which is a great organization. They pull up a lot of fighters that end up in the UFC, by the way, Um, and Bellator and WSOF. You know, it's the kind of thing, when I saw him fight and I see his punching power, I knew then that he would probably make it to the big leagues. He's a very aggressive fighter. He's very fast, and he's just all out there. He's got such strength in his hands. And, you know, even though he's fought in the smaller leagues, he is an American top team protege, and they usually train their people. He's, not, he's up at Cape Corral. They usually train their guys for some, you know, for big time. They're going for all for the gusto. He's a landscaper uh, part-time, so he's still working his part-time job, just had a baby. I think it should be an interesting match. In addition, um, you know, his opponent is coming off three losses. So I think for him it's a make-or-break fight for him. And while he has, you know, fought some bigger talent, he's, you know, coming into a three-fight loss, I, I don't know how that plays with your head if, if, if I am him. Because I think after three, it's, it's getting harder and harder to get out there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's amazing how much hype there was around. You're the guy until you're not the guy in this sport. And I've said that. It's like you're the quarterback until you're not the quarterback. And you're you're right. the it guy. And he was briefly – uh, the it guy. When I was looking at Thatch's record, I'm like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking betting him against Benson Henderson. <laughs> but uh, I've done a lot of dumb things over the years. Uh, Susan, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. Thanks, I look Gabe. forward to uh, to catching up uh, with you before the big uh, Chael Sonnen, Tito Ortiz uh, fight that should be an all-out circus uh, leading up uh, to that. <laughs> Fireworks is going to be entertaining as hell, that's for sure. So I look forward uh, sure to will. that. I wish uh, you and yours a, a, a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And I'll speak to you in the new year, Susan. Okay. God bless. Happy holidays, everybody. There's uh, Susan Singari, uh with us. Uh, MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network.